Welcome to episode four of Jimmy's Tips and Tricks. Uh, I'm going to show you basic geometry and pattern making tonight. I'm going to show you some tricks that I've learned along the way and a few that I've invented. This is a simple trick that my dad taught me many, many years ago. I need to extend a mark along a parallel edge. I just hold my fingers steady and just ride that edge. It's pretty accurate. You just got to make sure that when you start it, you just keep your fingers in the same exact position. If, for instance, I needed to shave off just a little bit, that gives me a mark that I could follow with my hand plane. If you wanted to just use a ruler, for instance, you could just hold your ruler at the mark you want, say eight inches, keep your pencil on the tip and just go down eight inches. If I needed to keep lines parallel to that, you just follow the edge of the ruler. Now I'm at five inches from the factory edge. And now if I want to come down another three inches, I go to two inches on the ruler. And so there, I've just made three parallel lines from the factory edge every three inches. So anything works, you could use a piece of wood, but the ruler helps because it gives you the indication where you're going to be. If you wanted to use your tape measure, just pull out your tape measure and it works the same way. A fat max or some other type of tape measure would work better the further away you get from a factory edge. This is a little wimpy for doing really far away. I'm actually rocking on my waist and my feet. So I'm just literally making this line by moving my body below my waist. Keep your upper waist locked in position and just kind of lean back. Which by the way, I keep my tape measure always on my belt. I never lose it. In the beginning when I kept losing my tape measures, I bought like 30 of them so they were everywhere in the shop so that I always had one nearby. And then one day it occurred to me just to tape it on my waist so it never comes off. So here's my tape measure, never comes off. You must love me exactly as I love you. Sometimes you have a continuous profile, like either a 2x4 or a piece of crown molding, and it's either 8, 16, or 10 feet long, and you want to just find the rough center, you could just physically find the rough center would be the balancing point of that center. You don't have to pull your ruler out. You know that this is either half of 10, half of 8, half of 16. It's a quick way to find the center is just to find the balancing point. Do you love me? The simple way to find the center of a square is to just connect the corners. And now you've found the center. Another way to find the center is, let's just say this is some wonky number. This just happens to be 20, so I know that 10 is the center. This is 17. Do we know what the center of 17 is? Quick, quick, quicker than that. I need it quicker. All right, so then what we do is we go like this. We put the diagonal. We start at zero and we go to a number that's easily divisible by two, say 20. And then we break that number in half. So right here, if we go to 20 there and we're at zero there, 10 is the center. That also works if you want to take a piece of material and you want to break it into even amounts. So let's just say we go to 20 again and we want to break it into four even amounts. So every five inches, we put a mark and and I've just broken this piece into four even quadrants and I didn't do any math at all. Do you know what one-fourth of 17 is? Quick, quicker than that. I didn't think so. This is just a cool tool I bought at Woodcraft a couple years ago, and it is a, an even divider. This is a good tool to have. I grab it once in a while when I need to lay out a piece of plywood or figure out something small. If you want to measure something and you need half of it really quickly, if you measure something and it happens to be 55 inches long, I literally just bend my ruler in half quick and read the bottom of the curve, and that says 27 and a half. And that's how I do my math without thinking about how to do math. To keep your pencil tip relatively sharp, every time you draw a straight line or you drag it along a ruler, you spin the pencil. By spinning it, you're keeping that tip from becoming chiseled or so-called so flat on one side. Drag a line and spin it. Even if you're going down a whole sheet of plywood, as you go, get into the practice of spinning your pencil.
This is an old pair, I guess you can call them dividers, compass. Years ago my brother asked me if I bought this when Ben Franklin had a stoop sale. You could simply make these, they're real easy to make. And uh, I draw big circles with it when I need to. And it works great, of course you just measure from tip to tip. But if you didn't have something like this, or you needed something quicker, or if you were on the fly, you could certainly just use anything to maintain the distance between the center of your radius and where you want to go. So here's my ice pick. I'll just push that down in the center of this piece of wood. So there, we have a perfect circle drawn with a scrap piece of cardboard. Anything would work. You could tie a loop and a string and draw that circle. You could use a piece of wire. You could use a piece of wood. Anything would work to become your radius. A lot of people don't realize, but the tip of every ruler has this little niche in it. And that is specifically to ride the head of a screw. So you could use your tape measure as a radius. So I can go like this, for instance. I can say, okay, I want to make a, a curved corner here. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to hold my ruler, and I'm going to come to here. And there, I've just made a perfect radius using the screw and this little niche in the end of my tape measure. The 3, 4, 5 rule, which basically means if you measure off of the corner of something to 3 feet, that's 36 inches and I measure up here four feet the hypotenuse of that triangle has to be five for it to be square so that's exactly five feet and this of course is a factory cut piece of plywood on the top of this table or a piece of MDF but if you're laying out rooms and you want to make sure that the sill plate here and this sill plate here are square to each other. You can do three feet, four feet, five feet, or any multiples of those three numbers that are evenly multiplied. You could do six, eight, and ten. That also works too. So that's for laying out big giant square 90 degree angles. I'm using a really coarse string, so I'm not getting a perfectly drawn line here. There you go. There's a pretty perfect oval. This is another way. This works better for me because it's a little bit more predictable, at least for me. I'm not good with my gazentism and math. But I lay out four pieces of paper. And now I have the ability to draw a quadrant. Now if I know that I need something that needs to be, say, 12 inches wide, I'll go to 6. And I know that it needs to be 22 inches wide, I'll stay on 11. And now I will just try and draw a fair curve between those two points. And of course the curve has to be tangential to this right triangle. A teacher once taught me if you draw a fair curve, to really check that fair curve, you literally look down on it like this, just like you would a pool cue. And you could see where and when that line is not as fair as you need it to be. And you just take note and then you redraw right where you know you have a problem. And I'm using the radius of my elbow and my wrist right here. And then of course once I do that, I can cut it. And now I have at least the beginnings of a good oval. Let's just assume for a minute I'm making a mirror, which I've done in one of my videos. Um, I'm rushing through this for this tips video, but 
there, now I have the pattern for my oval frame. I would translate this to a piece of wood and that wood would become my template. I could use it as a flush cutting router or I could use it as a bandsaw template. Give a light mist, glue half of it down. Light mist. I translate my marks just a little mist up. Spray paint. And the, <laughs> and the thinners inside the spray paint typically make the spray glue let go. So there, I have a perfect pattern now. I started out with a few pieces of paper. We want to make something that fits directly inside of this radius. I would do a rubbing of it. Just kind of get some spray glue on it. Tear it off. Try not to let it stick to itself too badly. And now, try and stick it on that edge, nice and gently. This gives me a really good starting point to make a complex pattern. Sometimes you have a pattern drawn on a piece of paper or it's printed or it's out of a magazine and you want to translate that image onto a piece of wood. Take it and draw on the back of it heavy lines with a chunky pencil and now you've turned it into a piece of carbon paper. When you draw over it, sometimes it's better to draw over it with a pen because that pen line will put more pressure right where you need it. And you'll get that mark translated to your piece of wood. Another method that works sometimes Spray paint on the back of it. Let it dry for a couple of minutes. This is a little too tacky, but we'll go for it. Sometimes that wet paint can become your carbon paper. And there you go. Fonts and typeface are of course complicated, so it's best to print them out so you have a nice exact pattern. And then you just cut right through the paper all at one time, and then you peel the paper off, and you have your finished cutout letter that you're going to paint or do whatever you need to do to it. These two steel weights represent something unmovable, say in a client's house and you need to make a pattern on the floor. And how do you make this complicated pattern here? You want to cut out wood or laminates to go on the floor around these objects. Uh, I often just start taping out my pattern on the floor. It's actually makes a lot of sense. I have a complicated pattern of this negative shape and it just took a few minutes with some blue tape. Again, if this is a dirt floor or say a gravel floor or just some other circumstance where tape doesn't work or you don't want to waste the tape, you could just begin to hot glue, keep a hot glue stick around and then start to hot glue your pattern together. All right, so now I just hot glued all these little bits and pieces together and I have a complicated pattern of this negative space. If for some reason I needed to build up, I could keep building up, but if you hot glue lots of small pieces together, consider them pixels in a big picture and then you end up making this complicated pattern. I don't know what this angle here is, but let's just assume I needed to make a frame for it. I needed to bisect this angle. I needed to know what half of this angle is. And I don't have a protractor. I'm not good with my math. This is a physical way to bisect that angle. This is exactly two inches, and this is exactly two inches. 
overlap them so you have the point there and the point there, and then if I raise the blade through that, then I'll have exactly half of that angle. So if you just spray glue this and make sure they cross. So you have this point and that point. Now that's a snug fit into that angle. I know that's pretty accurate. And now what I want to do is cut that right in half. And now with cardboard, that's where I would set my chop saw at, and I would have half of that angle. Your ears are cold. Here's that same example without spray glue. Just simply lay down your pieces. They just need to be the same width, and you mark right at the beginning of that angle and right at the back side of that angle. And now you just connect these dots and then that's half of your angle right there. This little space represents a, a, an inside angle that's either on a job location, you know, this is maybe just a cross section of a whole long length and you need to know exactly what that angle is going in and coming out. And again, just like I showed you on the other thing, cut two pieces, one that'll be at the bottom and one that'll represent the other side. Get those together, make sure they're snug, and now I can pull it out, and that's my angle right there. I could glue them together, or tape them together, but just make sure that they fit snugly in there, and that's my angle. <laughs> Do you love me?